listening to CTO Bob with Bob Pellerin. CTO Bob here. I'd like to welcome you to the first official CTOBob.com podcast. The purpose of this podcast is to help the small to medium-sized firms that don't necessarily have the IT resources to advise them. I'm going to be covering multiple subjects ranging from security to remote users, budgeting. I'll try to keep it as non-technical as I can. I think you'll find a lot of acronyms will creep in from time to time. There's no way around it. I got my first management job back in 1989 working for a legal firm in Montreal, Canada. Since then, I've worked for other law firms as director of technology. I've worked as CIO. I've worked as CTO. I have been senior manager at a company called Micron PC. I've been a systems engineer for Microsoft and a variety of other things. I've also published several books in the late 90s. I'm involved with many startups and sit on boards. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to Barnaby Jeans from VMware Canada. On today's podcast, we'll be talking about virtualization. Now, in my view, once you've selected an operating system and an environment for your infrastructure, the most important thing to have in place is virtualization. Barnaby, if you could explain to us what virtualization is. Okay, thanks, Bob. So, yeah, as mentioned, my name is Barnaby Jeans. I'm the Director of Technical Services here at uh, VMware Canada. And in my role, I spend a lot of time talking to customers around how they can really work on and improve their capital cost expenses, their operational cost expenses, and really reducing those by taking advantage of some of the capabilities around virtualization and ultimately moving towards the cloud. As you asked, Bob, you know, let's kind of level set and say, what is virtualization? Really, the concept of virtualization allows a customer, an end user, to really maximize the capacity that they have in their data center or on their physical servers today. Because historically, what happened was, as people rolled out new applications, they'd acquire new servers or new hardware to dedicate to those applications, either based on requirements from vendors or based on interoperability or restrictions between applications. When virtualization was introduced, what it really allowed was to take those same physical servers and now run multiple operating systems independently of each other on that same hardware, thus giving you the ability to really take advantage and utilize all of the capacity, all of the hardware, all of the CPU and memory that you're purchasing that perhaps weren't being used by some of those other applications. And in doing so, that's done a couple of things. One, it reduces the amount of hardware that you'd need to purchase. It reduces the amount of hardware that you then need to support in the data center. And if we look at this from an environmental standpoint, now has the potential to reduce your heating, your cooling, your hydro costs, as you look at running your business. Now, according to wikibon.com, over 69% of servers are presently virtualized. Now, I see many benefits in virtualization going from return on investment or ROI, uh, power savings, saving in hardware, high availability. Now, could I get your take on some of the primary reasons why corporations out there want to virtualize their environments? Well, I think the majority of clients are starting to realize that, you know, if they continue down what I'm going to call sort of the the historical approach of putting a new server in place for every application, that becomes very costly. And in a lot of cases, when you then go back and look at the utilization of those servers, in some cases, they're as low as 5 to 10% utilized which means you're paying a lot of money for hardware, which in turn really isn't being used for any productive workload. So if we start to look at what's happening today, companies are realizing that by putting VMware software onto those servers and then virtualizing the environment, now they can start to take advantage of all of that compute, all of the CPU and memory capacity inside those machines. Now, that's obviously a great starting point and provides the ability to get better utilization and in terms really drive that ROI. But what it also allows is to start to investigate and take advantage of new capabilities around high availability. Because let's face it, pretty much every business out there wants to make sure that their systems are up and running to be able to support the needs of the business, whether you're a law firm, a hospital, a doctor's office, Once you've invested in IT, you become dependent on those systems and you want to make sure that they're up and running. Once you've virtualized, now you've removed or abstracted 
the reliance on any particular piece of hardware. So if a server would fail at the hardware level, with a virtualized workload, I can simply restart that on another server. So now I'm back up and running very, very quickly. So absolutely, there's an ROI aspect of this, which allows us to get better utilization of the hardware we're purchasing, but it then starts to extend beyond that into high availability, and in some cases, even simpler management of those environments. I'd like you to help me to clarify something. A lot of executives talk to me and they don't seem to differentiate or to understand how VMware works in their environment. A lot of the questions I get are, well, we're a Microsoft shop or we're a Red Hat shop and so forth. They don't understand that products can work together in tandem. Absolutely. So if we were to look at you know, the typical model, whether you're a Microsoft shop or a Red Hat shop, um, you know, in those traditional approaches, you'd go out, you'd buy a server, and then you'd install a guest operating system. You'd install Red Hat or you'd install Windows directly on that hardware. And once you've done that, you really have a single operating system that can support you know, one or perhaps multiple applications. Now, in that approach, well understood, many customers started out with that. When we look at VMware, the easiest way to think about this is to say VMware really provides a layer between that operating system and the underlying physical hardware. So instead of you going out and purchasing a server and installing Windows directly on that physical hardware, you'd go out and purchase that server. You'd install the VMware ESX product, the virtualization hypervisor product, directly on the hardware. And then from that point, you can create virtual hardware, which you would then go ahead and install either your Red Hat or your Windows or any other x86 um, guest OS on top of. So really separating out the physical hardware from the operating system environment that you're going to be executing in. And, and we support any x86-based OS, so whether that's Windows Server 2003, Windows Server 2008, Windows Server 2012, uh, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows XP, um, Red Hat, or any number of other Linux distributions, you can now decide which combinations of software you want to run in your environment. The other thing that you'll find is it becomes very easy now to start to test out new environments. I don't need to go buy new servers. I can simply create a new virtual machine and make test copies of applications for either testing or for practicing upgrades. When I introduce virtualization to clients, one of the questions that I get is, is there an overhead to this? Is there a penalty for using, in effect, an operating system on top of another operating system? I've worked on many projects out there, including things like databases, SQL, mail servers, and so forth, and I have not encountered this in any environment to date. In fact, some of the legacy softwares or operating systems out there that I've virtualized have performed better and improved over what they were running on previously due to faster hardware. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the subject. Yeah, I mean, I would certainly agree with your observation that, you know, for the majority of workloads, the performance running on physical versus virtual is almost identical. And certainly there's been a number of published papers, um, both by VMware and independent um, testing organizations to really try to quantify that. Uh, but what I tend to look at with customers is to say, you know, test it out in your environment to understand what the specific um, use case looks like. But what I can tell you is with the newest generation of hardware, a lot of the capabilities and a lot of the functionality that historically VMware had to do in software to do the virtualization has now been moved to the hardware layer. So the new Intel chips have a great deal of functionality built in to support virtualization. And in doing so, really reduce the amount of overhead, as you call it, around um, performing or running multiple virtualized machines. So I think, you know, if your experience with virtualization was perhaps five to ten years ago, the overhead that you may have seen there versus the overhead that we're seeing today um, with current technology is dramatically different. And what I'm seeing is now we've got some very, very large-scale customers running large SQL environments, running large exchange environments, or running very large Oracle environments in a fully virtualized environment um, with very, very good performance. Here's a real-life example. Several years ago, I was approached by a manufacturer of an accounting software. 
they had a client that was remote that was having problems. They were claiming that the software, the system was slow. The accounting software manufacturer felt that it was a hardware or networking issue, and the client felt that it was a problem with the software. I was approached to have a look as a neutral party to see if it was software or hardware. One of the first things I did, thanks to the tools at VMware, is I was able to take the environment, the actual server with the SQL, with the accounting software, and everything with it, and from the backups, created a virtual machine, which I then proceeded to load, run some tests. And I was able to run some reports that they were claiming would take a long time, and produced a report in seconds. The secondary step was to ask one of the individuals at the remote office to connect to the virtual server through the internet and run their reports and see if I could identify if the problem was on their workstation. They were so impressed with the speed that one of the vice presidents of the companies calls me up and says, pack up that server, send it to me, love it, it's way faster than whatever we've got. At that point, I'm not sure if I erupted in laughter or not, but I certainly felt like laughing. I had to explain to him that I was running his server on a laptop, which was probably a couple years old at that point. And it was performing a lot better than their physical server. So it was thanks to VMware Workstation that I was able to recreate this environment locally so I could perform some tests. So in the end, it was a network adapter driver that had issues on their end. And by recreating on a virtual machine, I was able to play around with different settings without affecting their environment or their production. Absolutely. I mean, you bring up an interesting scenario, and this is certainly an area that um, a lot of customers perhaps start their foray into virtualization, and that's around the test or development type area. So one of the, the beautiful capabilities is to say, I can now create new virtual machines, very much like you did in your example. I can very quickly create a new virtual machine, install a piece of software that I want to test out, or let's say I'm a software vendor writing new applications, and I want my, my test department to be able to very quickly test those environments. I can create templates of an existing environment and very quickly redeploy either a pristine copy of that or roll back to a previously known good state so that I'm constantly testing from a known baseline. So definitely, you know, regardless of whether we're talking about real production servers, um, test dev is a great place to get started and certainly where customers are seeing a lot of value in virtualized servers. Now, a lot of firms over the years have invested in specialized equipment and specialized software. And we covered briefly legacy systems, but I'd like to get back to it. If you have an old Windows 2000 server, you have an older Linux system that's running in a closet somewhere, or perhaps at the bottom of your rack, now it's bound to have mechanical problems sooner or later where the physical box that is running this legacy system starts to have problems, whether it's hard drives, whether it's a motherboard that goes, or network card. And it does get more and more difficult to source new or reconditioned parts. Could you run us through how you would migrate or how you could take one of these legacy systems and make it run on newer, more powerful hardware? Absolutely. So typically, you know, in that type of scenario, you'd have a process called a physical to virtual migration. And what generally you would do would be to say, you know, what's really important here is the contents of the hard drive, right? Here's the operating system and all of the application code. Uh, we have a converter that you can connect to that application or connect to that server, take a copy of that hard drive, bring it into the VMware environment now as a virtual hard drive, build up a new virtual machine. So how much memory do I need? How much CPU do I need? Connect that virtual hard disk and now boot up that environment almost exactly as it looked on the physical side. And certainly that's a scenario that as users are looking at, how do I prolong the life of perhaps these legacy applications that there is no upgrade path to them or they're still critical to the business, um, this is definitely an approach that we see users taking. One of the other interesting scenarios that ties into that is also for archiving. You know, in some cases, you need to keep copies of older systems for you know, five, seven years perhaps for legal or regulatory requirements. So if you picture a scenario where perhaps a customer has an older accounting system that ran on maybe a Windows 2000 environment, 
Um, at some point, they decided to upgrade. They've replaced that with a new accounting system running on newer technology, but they still want to have access to that older system or they need to maintain it for regulatory reasons. Instead of maintaining that old physical hardware, as you said, that perhaps might break down or you've now got to try to maintain long term, you can convert that into a virtual machine and now archive that and have the ability to spin that back up whenever you may need it to refer back to or for any type of regulatory or legal request. That's all the time we had for this first episode. I want to thank you, Barnaby Jeans from VMware, for speaking to us today and for enlightening us on virtualization. Great. I appreciate the time, Bob. If you have questions or comments or suggestions for future podcasts, please go to www.ctobob.com. The opinions of the host and of the guests are their own and may or may not reflect the opinions of this website. This podcast is copyright 2013 and is written and produced by Bob Pelton. 